Hello and welcome to LSU Focus. It is post-match reaction show time. It's a day late. Unfortunately, I was a little bit under the weather yesterday, so I, I couldn't bring out a video that would have been to, I guess, the standards that I'd like them to be on this channel. But of course, when you win in the manner that Liverpool did yesterday, you're of course going to want to all be able to sit down and talk about it. And it is going to be a slightly shorter video as well, because as I'm pretty sure all of you know, there's a little bit more stuff to talk about uh, regarding Liverpool today. Although I will get on... Oh, this is... Try again. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to LSU Focus. It is post-match reaction show time. It's a day late. Unfortunately, I was a little bit under the weather yesterday, so I couldn't really bring out a video that was to the standard that I like to put stuff out on this channel. Uh, but of course, when you win in the manner that Liverpool did yesterday, you do want to be able to sit down and have a good old discussion of just how brilliant the Reds were. And it's going to be a slightly shorter video as well because there is more stuff to discuss today. Uh, unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you know that Liverpool have been having a rather busy deadline day so far, and I'm sure it's going to remain that way throughout the evening and there'll be a video all about that coming out pretty much straight after this one but in the meantime on the topic of Liverpool going to the London Stadium and dismantling West Ham with what was an excellent uh, second half performance it was really good to see Liverpool using the momentum of the win against Spurs and pretty much picking up where they left off I do think the first half was a little bit turgid I became a little bit concerned at one point that we were regressing into old norms you know the side to side pass the the safe bets over over the risky balls forward and stuff like that and everyone just kind of waiting for the perfect chance to become available rather than forcing the issue I thought I know people are still criticizing him a little bit and it's obvious that he isn't as good as the first choice front three but I did like what Origi was doing in that first half because he did something that I've mentioned over the last few videos that maybe hasn't Liverpool haven't been doing enough over the games where they have failed to score and haven't played well and haven't got the results they wanted which is we haven't been getting in behind defensive lines enough and Divock Origi last night in the first half when everyone else was still toiling away in much the same way they had over the last few games you know the Spurs match discounted Divock Origi was looking to be direct to get in behind to to create chances for himself rather than looking to to make things happen for everyone else which you do need you need selfish players in the squad and as, as brilliant as Mohamed Salah is and, and sometimes he does actually get criticized for being too selfish but always trying to trying to score goals rather than set other people up I do think he can sometimes be guilty of trying trying to be the man who creates everything rather than just being the one who gets on the end of things and Divock Origi was very much trying to be the latter it doesn't work out for him he doesn't get a goal he does have a few chances that he shanks wide but he pulls the West Ham defence around a little bit in a way that makes it more difficult for them to pick up other players like Mo Salah like uh, Jordan Shakiri as well it makes it much more difficult for them to defend because they know that he is always looking to get in behind and, and play on the last man and drag them back a little bit so like I said even though people will still criticise him for his performance and he isn't as good as Mane and Salah and Firmino I was still actually pretty pleased with what he did yesterday and you kind of have to accept that if he isn't as good as the other guys then what, when he gives his best and when he still fulfills a role for the team you've, you've got to be pleased with it while he's still a Liverpool player so that was good but apart from that in the first half it just felt a little bit turgid a little bit samey Liverpool weren't really putting West Ham under any sustained pressure apart from the early stages I thought in the first 15 minutes we really should have capitalised on that dominance there and scored a goal because in terms of the first 45 that was when we looked at our most dangerous and West Ham very much grew more comfortable and grew into the game and settled into a pattern that I felt suited them a lot more than us but obviously the first half becomes pretty irrelevant because the second half Liverpool really switch things up get things going and turn on the style of course Curtis Jones comes on uh, for James Milner it was very entertaining to see that little discussion that they had on the touchline but one of the first things Jones does and I think Jurgen Klopp said this in his post-match interview he told Curtis Jones to be cheeky when he came on the pitch which is one of the things we love about Curtis Jones he is cheeky he likes to take the mick a little bit when he's on the football pitch he likes to make other players look silly and, and try things that other players wouldn't and he does that by just driving at West Ham taking the ball at his feet and getting at them and then playing that ball to Mo Salah and it's a good ball as well even though Salah does a hell of a lot between when he first receives it and when the ball's in the back of the net the ball is in front of Mo which is great because one issue that we have had when we're playing too safe and we're not scoring enough goals is all the passes are either behind the player if they're badly played or or, or to feet which which doesn't give the player any momentum to take into what they want to do next next they're very very static when they receive it often with their backs to goal as well Mo Salah is facing the goal on the run and even though he does stop and check back inside 
what it does is it, it diddles the defenders basically because they think he's going to carry on moving or take the shot first time. So they go with him expecting that and it allows Mo Salah to do what he does like to do, which is to cut inside and bend the ball into the far corner. And he does it absolutely spectacularly. And in a season like this where you aren't going to ever really get brilliant 90 minute performances, you want to have a player who can take advantage of the moments when you're on top. And while Salah hasn't been doing that over the last few games, although you could argue that Liverpool haven't really been on top at all, in the last few games, again, discounting the win against Tottenham Hotspur. Uh, yesterday, when Liverpool were on it and when they were starting to create chances, you could rely on Mo Salah to be the man who got on the end of those chances and scored the goals that won Liverpool the game. Of course, the second goal is absolutely fantastic. We all know that. It was completely world-class. The ball from Trent is brilliant. It's such a big ball. It goes so far across the pitch, and yet it's so perfectly placed that Shakiri does not break stride. Shakiri is running all the way until he reaches that ball, and he can play the cross first time because he's got all the right momentum going into it. Again, players coming onto the ball with momentum. The pass is being played in front of them, giving them the option to be more aggressive in what they do next, and he whips that cross in straight away, while West Ham is still backpedalling, which at first you think is a little bit risky. You'd want him to take a touch, drive at them a bit more, get into an even more threatening place. But given Shakiri, his he has quality and he knows that. He knows that he can play that ball, which is brilliant because when he does it, it gives West Ham no time whatsoever to get back. And Salah is in a position where he can just take a, a godlike first touch. You know, it's absolutely incredible. That goal was Mo Salah at his absolute best. The first touch is sublime on his weaker foot as well. And then the second touch to just just dink it round the goalkeeper. The, the audacity and the confidence to be able to do that. Something that I don't think was there over the last few games. And also probably because he has no time to think about it as well. It's not like he's run half the length of the pitch with the ball at his feet. Knowing he's one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. He just does that on pure instinct. And I think that's when Mo Salah is at his best. When he's not stopping to think. When he's just doing what he's almost programmed to do in a way. Which is to score an absolute bucket load of goals. And it puts him back clear at the the top of the Premier League scorers charts. It essentially seals the deal for Liverpool. Of course, the, the, the goal for Gini van Alden is absolutely beautiful as well. Firmino, I think at first you feel like criticising him for not shooting because you want your strikers to be greedy. You want them to have the confidence to take on any chance in or around the box. But he does the right thing because the whole West Ham defence also thinks he's going to shoot. So they all go that way. I think Craig Dawson flies in to block the shot. And listen, if Firmino goes near post, Fabianski probably saves it. If he goes far post, it almost definitely gets blocked by the sliding block, by the sliding tackle from the defender. So he picks out Gini Wijnaldum. Liverpool walk it into the net. It's 3-0. It's game over. They do concede a late goal, which uh, you can't criticise him too much for. At first, it looks like Nat Phillips bungles the clearance. But on second watch, it's flicked off the head of Robertson before that, which is why... Nat Phillips basically goes like that and the ball goes over him. So, you know, fair enough. That's just hard luck, really. And thankfully, Liverpool were out of sight before that could have any effect on the game. And they left the London Stadium with all three points, which was, of course, absolutely massive. I think a special shout out has to go to Nat Phillips and Jordan Henderson as well. Of course, Henderson, he's a brilliant player. We all know him. We all love him. He's not really a centre-half, but I thought he performed admirably there. And as Jurgen Klopp said after the game, you know, he, he wants to... Or was it... It was Klopp or was it Milner who said... He wants to watch himself because he could end up playing centre-half for the rest of his career at this rate because he's absolutely fantastic. Although, as we all know, he's a brilliant midfielder as well. And then Nat Phillips just looks a lot better than he did at first. You know, I thought right, right when he first came into the Liverpool team, he has that brilliant game again against West Ham at Anfield and, and he looks like he could be a promising backup for Liverpool. I think he then has a few games where he doesn't get found out necessarily, but it becomes clear what his weaknesses are. He's clearly worked on that because you felt like Antonio would have been primed to exploit Nat Phillips' possible lack of pace, possible lack of, of positional understanding of Liverpool's system of playing centre-half centre in this position. But there was no sign of that. He didn't, he wasn't, well, he was troubled by Antonio, but he dealt with everything that was thrown at him very, very well. It's a real shame he doesn't get a clean sheet because I think he deserves it. And of course, as we'll come on to in the next video, Liverpool are looking at extra centre-half options. But the good news is the lads that we've got already, as much as half of them are, you know, broken and on the treatment bench at the moment, the ones who are still standing and still available to play games for Liverpool are still 
pretty, pretty good as well. So that is all today's video. Well, this video, there'll be another one coming pretty much straight after this. Until then, thank you guys very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, as always, you know what to do. Hit the like button down there. Hit that subscribe button there if you're new around here. Check out some of the other videos that have been out on the channel over the past few days. Don't forget to follow at LHC Focus TV on Twitter. And I'll be back very, very shortly with some transfer news for you. Until then, bye for now.